All right, so I'd like to demonstrate the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, there are other ways it's written. There's other formulations of this, but the most common, most useful form in the calculus sequence, at least, um, is what I have written here, that an integral. Um, remember, this is an area of the curve. This is something that you can compute via a horrible Riemann sum. Instead, you can calculate it as just subtraction, f of b minus f of a, big F, where big F is an antiderivative for little f. That is f prime, big F prime equals little f, meaning it's a function that you can take the derivative of to get little f. Um, so if you can find an antiderivative, then doing the integral, doing the area under the curve is super easy. It's just subtraction. Plug and do value to subtract them, and you're done. A lot easier than a Riemann sum, right? So let's, um, Let's see an example of this. So let's look at um, the, the same area, the same function that we did via a Riemann sum in uh, Riemann sum video. Right? So let's calculate again this area under the curve of this little region here where we're going from x equals 1 to x equals 2 of 5 minus 2x. This was, we did it with geometry, we did it with Riemann sum, now I want to do it with fundamental theorem. Um, so here is the nice thing. All we have to do is say, okay, this is our function, little f. What would I take a derivative of to get little f? Well, do it one piece at a time. How would I get 5 by taking a derivative? Oh, I would need 5x. How would I get negative 2x by taking a derivative. Ah, I would need negative x squared, right? The derivative of negative x squared would be negative 2x. Then I just plug in my bounds. See, see here now I have my big F. That's big F, right? It's the function whose derivative equals little f. Now just plug in the bounds and subtract, and you're done. All right, so I want big F of 2 minus big F of 1. Plug those in. So I get 5 times 2 minus 2 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 1 squared. Right? And we get, what do we get when dust clears? Let's see, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 4 is 6. Then I have over here, I have 5 minus 1 is 4. And I get 2, which is what we got by trapezoids and also by everyone sums. So that worked just fine. All right, so there's an example of calculating an area under the curve using an antiderivative, um, using fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Which says you don't need to do a Riemann sum if you can find an antiderivative. Super powerful, right? Notice how much easier that is than a Riemann sum. Um, okay, so let's do another one now where the um, the function at hand is a little bit trickier. So let's look instead at this. Region. Right, and I want to do this using the fundamental theorem of calc. So here's Our function, so it's an exponential decay function, right? So it's e to the minus x. And I want to do the area from 0 to 1. Right? And um, how can I do this? Well, once again, I need to think what would I take the derivative of? the idea of an antiderivative, right? What would I differentiate to end up with e to the minus x? Well, you can kind of rig it for yourself by saying, OK, well, if I did the derivative of e to the minus x itself, I get close. But the chain rule spits out an extra negative sign. So what if I? put an extra negative sign on the left-hand side. Now I'm going to get a double negative on the right-hand side, and that'll work just fine. 
right? So sometimes you can kind of guess something nearby and then just sort of fix it. Um, that's what we did here. So that tells me my antiderivative. So I can use big F is going to be negative e to the minus x. So then that's our antiderivative. The derivative of big F would equal little f. Now that I have big F, my antiderivative, I can calculate this integral in no time at all. So what does this become? It's the antiderivative to the negative e to the minus x evaluated between 0 and 1. So I have I calculate this at 1, then I subtract, and I calculate it at 0. So I get negative 1 over e plus 1. 1 minus 1 over e. That's the area of that gray region. Right. So very quickly, I get an answer for what that area is, even though I, um, you know, I never really did any geometry, right? I didn't have to draw rectangles or add up their areas or anything like that. Um, right. I, and knowing an antiderivative with the fundamental theorem, that's enough. Now, what I want to show here is one more technique. Um, there's a trick called u substitution. And what this is, is um, it helps if you're, um, sometimes as your functions get messier, sometimes it helps to make a substitution to kind of clean up your internet. So I want to do this same example again. Um, but I want to um, show how you would use this, how you would clean up your integrand by making a substitution. u equals really whatever you want. You can always try any expression for u sub, not every, but not every expression will be helpful, right? Um, so you sort of strategically guess something to hopefully clean up the integrand. Um, when you do this, you're also going to need to trade out the du for dx. So be careful. You'll have to you'll have to take a derivative once you do that. Right? So this is the strategy. So I want to show this same example again um, that we just did, but I want to show just a slightly different way of approaching it using u substitution. So here's the idea. I could say that negative x, that inner function inside the exponent. That would make a good choice of u. I can let u equal negative x. So then du dx is just negative 1. Right? The derivative of u with respect to x is negative 1. This means dx equals negative du. So now I can actually clean up my integral by subbing u for negative x, because that's what it equals. And then I would sub negative du for dx, because of, again, that's what it equals. All right, now I could pull out a minus sign. Then I can now take this integral of e to the u du. This is an easier antiderivative. Up here, we had to kind of hunt and peck around and fix this minus sign and stuff. This is an easier antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of e to the u du? Well, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. Therefore, the antiderivative of e to the u is also e to the u. E, the exponential, natural exponential function is its own derivative. Therefore, it's also its own antiderivative. So I can just say e to the u. Now be careful though, don't plug an x value in for a u. All right, so instead, Make sure you put u, put a negative x back in for u before we evaluate the x equals 0 and x equals 1. And we get the same result as before. So just kind of a different way to structure the work, right? Same calculation, just a different way to structure the work. So I wanted to show that in two ways, right? Here we got the antiderivative kind of by almost strategic guessing, right? Take a nice guess, adjust it. 
here we got it. Um, you know, it's maybe a little messier this way, but it's a little more mechanical. It didn't require as much cleverness. Um, we were able to kind of just grind through it with an algorithm. So both both good techniques to, to have around. So, um, all right, so there we go. There's the fundamental theorem of calculus and a few examples of evaluating um, integrals, right? Calculating areas under the curve using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Thanks.